right. So once again, good evening and welcome to my leadership journey. This is Highcard's platform where we get the privilege and the honor of having one of our own um, that has distinguished himself or herself in their field of endeavor. We bring them onto this platform. We give them the opportunity to share up close with us their life, their journey, and also afford us the opportunity to learn from them some of the lessons that they've picked in the course of their lives up until now. We get the privilege and the honor to get insider information to some of them. And then we pick some, some nuggets from them. We apply them to our lives and, and we grow. And, and tonight is no exception. We have one of our own that has distinguished herself. And we have been talking about this for some time now. We have been arranging and rearranging. And uh, by the grace of God, today is today. And uh, it's an honor to have uh, one of my very long time friends. Um, she's being a friend to me and to my family and also to the HiCat family, HiCat team. She has supported us in, in many and um, diverse ways. She's been there for us. And well, I don't know anyone who knows the HiCat journey better than this one that we are hosting tonight. And it's exciting for us to host her because um, not too long ago, she made all of us proud, you know, when there was a graduation ceremony at the University of Ghana. And here was our own part of those that uh, backed PhD degree. <laughs> they have the PhD as, as part of the degrees that uh, she has scattered. And guess what? She did this in finance. So we're asking her, some questions about that. And, you know, this is someone that has played different leadership roles and, and at different levels. And tonight, it's an honor and a privilege to have her join us and also to have agreed to share her life with us. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Dr. Angela Azuma Alou. So, yeah. Um, uh -huh. Tell us about yourself. Okay. So my parents named me Angela since I was born on 2nd October. That's the feast of the guardian angels. Okay. I think now is the memorial. Yes. The memorial of the guardian angels. Right. And um, Azuma is a day name for a Friday born among the Kosasis and then some other um, groups in the northern parts of Ghana, right? And then I lose my father's name. So that's maybe my name in summary, right? And uh, I'm the first of um, four. I see my brother, one of my brothers here and I have um, two brothers and then a sister. Right. And um, we grew up in Tema, right. mainly um, starting from um, Community 2, so basic school at Shields Experimental School. Unfortunately, the school has collapsed, as happens with many private schools. Yeah, then I went to... Um, St. John Bosco School, basic school to finish junior high and then um should I say I ended up at St. Rose's for secondary school and then I came to UG University of Ghana and then I've been I was here for three degrees. So I think that's the summary that I'll start with. Um I have done what we call galamsi, so a lot of a bit of roaming. So I've done um some. I've worked in investment banking. Right? I've worked in research, and then lecturing, and then um now in 
developments with I mean the newest developments with her on the block. So <laughs> that's it. since when? That <laughs> this month. So this month, okay. Um, up until okay, now, so my you've first done... job was actually after secondary school. Okay. So you start yes. you started earning very yes. early. Yes, 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 yes. I think um I I bought my I bought my missile with um, one of my first earnings like from um work here. So after secondary school. And I think I actually bought a cloth with that one too, because I wanted like to remember it. Is a pop yeah, still I wanted there? something tangible. Uh, yes, yes, it's still there. I think I don't fit into it anymore. So I'm, I'm sure we've probably given it away. Yeah. You know, we have to find a way of doing adjustments and, and patches here yeah. and there so that uh, maybe the next time we are doing this interview, you, you can you can put that on and then we see. This is the beginning, the, the cloth that you started. <laughs> your, your so the the missile is still there. The missile is still there, just I've left it at home. I think I bought the Sunday missile, yes. Okay. I normally run away from the missiles, you know. I was telling some people that I... <laughs> okay, I'll end it there. I'll, I think I'll it, was it. Before we got, it was before we got all these devotionals that have the reading, so it was quite helpful because I I have been a lector since I was in basic school. So then we mm. always needed that to prepare for the readings. Yeah. So so basic school in, in, in Tema and, and going up like that, you, you remember some of the people in, in school and and some of your your fond memories. Even though that school is no more, I'm sure if you mention it, some people can connect to it. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Um, well, I I would say I was rather the um the quiet um kind because I I liked reading, which I still do. So I think even and we used to send food to school, so maybe we might play. But um, break time was just another opportunity to um get into the um what's the name the the world of books so um i was in school with my cousin so i meant that you already had that my brother came later but i think we didn't meet because by then i had um left the school had a new and then old site and uh, after school my mom didn't like us playing out too much but since we were quite a lot anyway. So I think there was a point at which we had one bicycle among about, uh, was it five or six of us? So at least we could do our own. Then there was, uh, I think we had some balls so then we could play around the neighborhood too. But um, as I got more involved with the books, I quickly let go of those ones. So I got more involved with writing the poetry and then trying to write short stories to imitate the other thing. So it's ended up being a lot more indoors um, work for me rather than the outdoors. And uh, my mom used to get us these, like the Magro Hill books from Book Trust. Mm -hmm. She was a student at um, Atraco, now uh, Macra College of Education. So yeah. she, she, she would, yeah get those ones so then i really liked doing that so i think i taught myself to write cursive with um with one of them and then um try to work like some of the um the things so was, uh, we had some science books there were some maths and then english books too so we did that but we also played like quite a, a lot too like around the neighborhood. Oh, Mr. Koyo, I'm sorry, I've not answered the question well. You were asking for names, right? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm enjoying the okay. story. I, I, I thought by now you okay. should have been playing for Black Queen. So Wings. I think you... this afternoon. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I, 
Um, I think I was very, very bad at um, physical activity. <laughs> because even now, I, I can't count of any sport that I know how to play except solitaire. So. <laughs> That's very indoor. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, but we did um a lot of those ones. We had um I think board games, then there was Ludo, yeah, and then I think the Oari, both the one you play with the instrument and the one that you make the holes in the ground. We did the pilolo, all those ones. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so some from of the shows, names um you remember from primary school. Yes, so so let me try. So then those, um, I think those Gloria and Kuma Boateng, she was my friend in um, basic school. Her, her mom was, a, I think, a child evangelist. So she used to come to the school for worship. She left later and then I met her at business school. So that was a really pleasant surprise. Then um, those Abel Henyakwe, he was a senior. But I think, um, I think we were, executives of the youth and sports club at Shield. So um, there was Mr. Taylor, who was a teacher. He took us um, on a trip to the stadium, to, um, I think, to NAFTI, and then um, to the Kwame Nkrumah Museum. Yes, um, Abel now runs the Sharks. He's, he's always been very education centered. So this afternoon, I was um, there to, um, watch the finals. I think Prisek won again right, for that. <laughs> nice one. So he's been doing normally of normally in basic school. My best friend. Your best friend? I think in basic school was um was um Jessica Parker. She lived um within our neighborhood, but um, I think once I left, we st tried to stay in touch because she actually came to visit my school. Like uh, um, we arranged for her to come to my other school. And then there were a few times I went for their Saturday classes, but over time we lost touch. I think she's in Kenya now. Yes, she lives in, in Kenya now. So those were, those are a few of the people from basic school. Or well, they crossed you after school to beat. <laughs> no, no, not after school to beat. You, no, we used you to look walk like, home in a... You look like one of those who say, say today no homework. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't that serious. Remember that I wanted more time to um to read. To read, Which is okay. not exactly who work, yes. Because I think uh, at a point I was very upset that there was this teacher um, in, was it class six or so, who was um, my father's friend, who would mm -hmm. call me and give me extra homework. Like, who does that? Mm -hmm. Well, um, what should I say? It's... Um, I sort of fell into that um whole thing by external influence because i have always been like a, a reading and writing person so yeah that's that's what, that's what i'm that's what i'm wondering with all the so reading this was, yeah this was never um my um what do you call it this this was never something that i would have chosen at all because i think i i always wanted to be a journalist and then um i did so i did the general arts in secondary school like as preparation for that and absolutely enjoyed it um but so there was some external influence so mm. my dad thought that um given the way that ghana is and then with how much more difficult it is to get a job with sometimes some of the humanities courses then um, since my grades fitted me for that, it was better to go to business school. So, mm. so that was how I ended up there. And then you did the banking and finance, and then you enjoyed 
the banking and finance and then you um no i didn't enjoy the banking and finance honestly like i um it was hard for me mm. yes like i think i'm um, fast 101 like i had like a c it was just by the grace of god that i have to reset it and then i think it was yeah it was our first it was one of our first papers was at 11 30 i was so scared i was like no there's no way i can go for mass before i go and write this paper so <laughs> it just it just didn't make sense at all so i think i almost even paid for classes but i had to um one of my friends uh, one of my course mates um akusa he was kind enough to like go with me through it and that was a very new experience for me because it has always been maybe you on the other side assisting somebody and now wow. i had to take the assistance so it still didn't make much sense but at least i passed it and then i was able to move on because i think one of my friends so there were three of us from the um my class in the my general arts class in um, secondary school that's where in the business school together interesting we all majored in banking and finance so one of the girls didn't i think she had a d so then she opted to rewrite it the next year mm -hmm. yeah. then you you moved on to to do phd finance how how how, how was that journey the phd journey about Mr. Kobe, you know how that journey was. Well, I'm not sure I, I do. It was only by the grace of God and a lot of tears. Please define the grace of God. <laughs> what is your personal definition for the grace of God? Okay, so I think um, that gave me my first experience with failing an examination because I had been out of school for some time. And then I came back in and um, I was doing superwoman things because I was working two jobs when I started the PhD. Like I was teaching in two different schools. I think I almost even added a third one. Wow. And then I was holding two executive positions in Tema. So like almost all the weekends I was at home. Yet this, um, the financial economics didn't make any sense and then the um, micro, and then rather than asking for help, I thought I was superwoman, so I was doing it all by myself. So I think my dad kept mentioning it, but I I thought I was, I had it all under control. Mm -hmm. And then the, we wrote the exam, and then I had two Ds. Wow. <laughs> yes. Grace that I've not seen before, but I saw them. So then, um, so when that happened, right, um, I, I think there were a lot of questions because it was like, what is all of this? I've quit a well-paying job to come and do this, and now this is happening. Am I sure this is what I want to be doing at all? So there were a lot of questions that had to be answered, and then a lot of different strategies that had to happen. So... Um, I think in the, um, and it was a really small class. There were just three of us. So for the second semester, for instance, I, um, I, I think I reduced my teaching load and then mm. quit one of the jobs and um, just told everybody at home that I could not be making it for like the various executive meetings and then just had to keep sitting with one of um my other mates that's Gladys just to study then there was another friend George so he had a much more quantitative background mm -hmm. so he was always around to um would you like to um for you to bounce things off yeah. right to, um go through the questions because um, sometimes there can be that challenge. Okay, they've done it. You think you understand it, but have you done it yourself? And I think I found, I found that it's made me more empathetic for um, maybe students who have 
um, failed because um, finance at every level can be quite a bit to swallow. Mm. In terms of advising them that, okay, this is what um, like you're doing. Um, you should do this instead. I think I, I had to share with one of my colleagues who had also started the PhD, who was doing all the superwoman things I was doing that, Madam, the way you are going, this is what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And she didn't listen just as I didn't listen. And the same thing happened to her. So then I had to also keep encouraging her that don't worry. Like once I was able to go through it, you would also be able to do that. So... So you know, I had what, to with a lot of different strategies and then asking for the needed help. Yeah. Just, yes, and, and Gladys and, and George, they helped. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We should look for them and, and give them some awards for producing a PhD <laughs> find for us. You know, the, the story you, you just shared with the finance thing, I, I, I can relate. I remember in, in secondary school, I, I I used to read mathematics, you know, when, when people work. That's a good idea. <laughs> when people work maths on, on those days, filmmaker bolts that you use that solution to wipe and all that, I would be reading. Huh? <laughs> I'll be reading maths instead of working so like you said it can be it can be difficult you 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 managed to to deal with it and successfully graduated now maybe some people are on with us and they're asking themselves this path that i'm choosing or the path that i'm interested in is this the way I should go? From your PhD experience, what would you say to anyone that is aspiring for PhD or anyone that is having to contend with academics at any level at all? Okay, I think for that, I would say um, definitely you would have to um, maybe go back and then even ask yourself why you got into it in the first place, mm. right? And if that is a way that you can possibly go. So if that is there, like once that is established, then the other things come with, um, the other things will be there, like the operational aspects. Because um, for the micro um, mentor in Legon like this was um, has always been very encouraging in terms of reminding you that, yes, even when it gets hard, you push through it. And sometimes that becomes like an experience for other people. So then if you are sure that if you are able to understand the why of like you um, um understand why you are doing it and then mm. it's just that okay maybe it's it's difficult what can you do about it do you need to ask for help do you need to do things differently charles is here there have been times that maybe we had to make time to like um try to stay up all night although i would always fall asleep i don't do too well with staying up all night so do you need to get out of your usual environment do you need to maybe let go of something for a particular season just so you can finish something because it can be hard especially when you are um like you are you are involved in you have your extracurricular activities and other things that you are doing. Maybe do you need to forget about them for a while and then come back? Because it's, it's sometimes not easy to do that. And then it can feel like, oh, but it's only an hour that I'm going for this meeting. But then um, all of those things add up. So those are the things that I would say. You may need to do things differently. You may need to um, excuse yourself from certain things. You may need to maybe develop new hobbies 
even just for that particular period. And then remember that there's an end to it so that the picture of that end can help you keep going on. One of the things um, my friend Esther and I did was um, we got, okay, no, I think this was something that I did even when I started the PhD. So I cut out pictures of the end. So I cut out a picture of a woman wearing a PhD gown, someone wearing a, um, having a job, like all the things that I wanted. And then I just put them in my purse. And then I, I have them with me all the time. Like they are still there. Then when it was getting closer, we cut out, uh, we downloaded pictures of, I think, no, first PhD pieces submitted. And then I think um, the red gown, right? So I had that on my phone and then I think on my laptop screen for a very long time, just to keep reminding you that, okay, maybe even on a day that, things haven't gone well, right? Remember that that is just another day and then this is the end that you are working towards. And I think finding any and everything that can inspire you, right? For me, there were lots of books that did that. Although at a point I had to um, maybe forget about the books for a while to... Because even when you're trying to read, if you, you're feeling guilty because that's like, yeah, you're taking time away. But there was this movie that I watched, Utopia. So I'm not very, um, a big fan of cartoons, but I liked that um, particular cartoon. Um, talked about a rabbit who wanted to become a police officer. And it was really, really hard for uh, for her i could relate and there was this song so maybe i go to the doctoral building that day things have not gone well at all i come back and then i'll play the song and dance to myself and dance in the room because that was another day it was just another day the next day will be better those are words and from the song I um, no, so the song is called Try Everything. Okay. It says, um, sometimes we come last, but we did our best. Mm. Yeah. So it just keeps reminding you to try again, try again, try again. And then give try, yourself... Try again. Try again and yes. give us a line. Give us a line from the song. <laughs> <laughs> You can't, you can't recite so the, the song. The song is try everything. So Charles would be really, really good to sing this. See, he has even put the title of the song there. See, so Shakira has sang it. I cannot attempt. Before I I break the glass here and then in here <laughs> on everyone's screen. Yeah. So, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, let me play it in. 